Okay, welcome back to the flight demo. This is flight video number 10. This is MCP approach mode switch. Uh, video number 10. Uh, you just finished looking at video 9, which was the briefing for this flight demo. So now we're actually on the downwind leg uh, doing the flight demo. Let me real quickly get my screen marker set up as we're uh, continuing to fly along. And I want to pull up SIM checklist. We are doing MCP tutorial approach mode and it's slide 12 so we're right here set up for the demo. Let me minimize that. All right. We're heading towards Kimi right now on the downwind leg. We're just coming up passing Boulder and uh, while we pass Boulder, I thought it'd be <laughs> kind of fun while we're waiting. Watch the RMI needles on the ND displays change positions right now. These are the heads for both needles one and two because they're both tuned to the Boulder VOR pointing to the Boulder VOR. But we're just about ready to fly over and pass it. Here's the dedicated RMI indicator, radio magnetic indicator. And we'll watch all these uh, displays swing as they as the heads turn behind us we just passed past the boulder uh, VOR all right now Kimmy is we're just coming up on Kimmy just pass passing it now we are now on the last downwind segment going into chips and as you'll recall chips has a uh, speed uh, constraint of 170 knots. This is the deceleration donut where uh, the FMC will start to slow us. I'm going to actually start slowing now, so I'm going to go to flaps one. And because the base leg is so short, five miles, when I'm done with the flaps, I'm going to go ahead and tune and identify the nav radios. So there's flaps one, waiting for the green slat light. Now I'll go to flaps five. And my flaps five uh, maneuvering speed will be pretty close to 170. And there it is, 168. So that'll set us up real nicely for crossing chips at the 170 knot uh, speed restriction. So I'm going to go ahead and to and identify the nav radios. 110.3 is the frequency. I still think it's kind of hard to fly single pilot uh, IFR in the 737. You got to do everything yourself. All right, so let's tune and identify. Init ref 110.3.255 is the course. ILS. ILS. Uh, and we've got the enunciation. Set the inbound course 255 on the captain, first officer 255. All right, so the radios have been tuned and identified. We've got uh, configured uh, flaps five, so we're on uh, our maneuvering speed for flaps five. So we're in real good shape, got everything done. We head into chips and start our base leg turn. Now, while we're getting set up to make the turn, let me go to my ILS notes. Normally, the Boeing standard has us going to flaps five as we are on our intercept heading to the localizer. But because we've got that 170 speed restriction, we're starting our turn now. I had to, we had to slow up sooner than that. That's why I went to flaps five. And I'm trying to get ahead a little bit because of the short base. So I, I tuned and identified the nav radios uh, beforehand. Uh, <laughs> it's it's hard to talk, teach, <laughs> and actually uh, do all this stuff simultaneously. I could really use a co-pilot. So, all right, so we're turning base. I'm still in LNAV. So ATC has cleared us for the approach. So uh, as we get in a little bit closer, I'm going to go ahead and press approach mode. And so I've done that. And you'll notice I 
uh, got still an LNAV, but I got uh, localizer armed. But here's a glide path. I got glide path arm. I didn't get glide slope like I wanted. So I'm going to pause the video here for a minute because I want to talk about uh, what happened and how this came about. But I also want to talk about why we don't we don't want to get that as a surprise. I get a lot of emails from flight simmers that have experienced this this glide path, and from their emails and and a few of them. Uh, we've actually linked up on the telephone and I've talked to them. They're surprised they got it, number one. Number two, they don't know how to get rid of it. And so that's why I decided it would be uh, nice to, to show you this in this flight demo. And I want to talk about how to get rid of it. But first, I'm going to tell you why we got into it. But I want to go back to the demo slide. So here's glide path arm. So the first part first of the three demos we've just seen glide path arm I've got the simulator pause so we're, we're kind of frozen and here's the reason that happened let me highlight the DME down here we are 27.8 miles out and that's too far out to pick up a glide slope signal so when you press the approach mode switch and the FMC doesn't see or detect a glide slope signal in this case we're too far out it generates an artificial three degree glide path for us to fly down to the runway and you can see we've lost the ILS enunciation right here in the uh, PFD it's now it now says loc glide path so I don't want a glide path I want to I want a glide slope because I want to do an auto land and I want to fly an actual ILS this is a form of an IAN approach, integrated approach and navigation, uh, because it's a glide path. It's an artificial uh, uh, vertical profile down to, to the threshold of the runway. So that happened because you were, I was too far out. You need to be about 15 to 18 miles out, somewhere in that range, before you press the approach mode switch. And then you'll get glide slope arm instead of glide path now the other thing I wanted to talk about um, is that you need to know where you are in your approach in other words if, if you press APP and you, get a, and you get a glide path and you're surprised by that then what that indicates is you haven't briefed your approach plate and your star your standard terminal arrival route you haven't looked at it enough and read a, you know and read the details on where you are at your various waypoints and because it shouldn't come as a surprise if if you want a glide path that's one thing but if you're not expecting it then that that's an indication that that something isn't right and what isn't right is you haven't you haven't understood the the approach parameters particularly in this case the distance how far how far out you are and and so in, in the airline world um, if you're flying a 737 NGX, when you when you press approach mode, you want it to engage and you want it to stay engaged. You don't want to have to go through and I'm about to go through showing you how to deselect it. You don't want to have to do that. And, and so you need to be you need to have some situational awareness on your whole approach, your downwind leg, your intercept heading, and your and your intersections on the ILS on where you are so that when you press approach mode you know that you're going to get glide slope arming now i'm going to go through and, and show you how we we deselect this since uh, i got into it uh, so i'm going to go ahead and un, unpause the simulator so now we're we're back flying again we did have localizer capture so one of my items is to marry the heading to the inbound approach course 255 now, how do we, we deselect this? Well, if you go up and, and you, if you click on LNAV, that, that doesn't do anything. You can click on it, you can push it. It won't do anything. You won't, it won't kick you out. The, the whole idea is that you're locked into approach mode. Remember, one of the ways in the, in the ground school video, uh, video eight, was to turn off both autopilots, turn off both flight directors, and just do a, a clean restart. Uh, but I'm going to show you uh, a slightly different way you, uh, to do that. I'm going to select heading select and there's the FMA so I am in heading select 
approach mode switch green light is still illuminated I'm going to go to localizer that finally removes the approach mode so the green lights extinguished I'm going to set up a slight right hand turn to re-intercept I've got localizer armed but I am in heading select you can go back and and fly L nav but I'm electing not to, to do that because the intercept heading with if I go back to L nav is very shallow and it's going to take a few miles to re-intercept the localizer I, I don't want to take the time in this training demo so I'm using heading select there's low capture now I'm, I'm using heading select because I want to get a low capture quicker so I can start focusing on the vertical path so let me update my heading back to the inbound course so that's how we deselected and that takes care of the second uh, part of the demo unselecting approach but remember this is not what you you want to have happen this is not something you want to do if you're if you have to do this then something you didn't do something right on the approach you didn't get it set up right or you didn't brief your plates uh, well enough or close enough to know you know what's going on with your situational awareness We've been cleared for the approach, but I've deselected, so I, I'm back flying on the localizer. I've got the localizer captured. So now what I'm, I'm waiting on is I'm waiting to get closer in before I press APP again. And I'm going to wait about till I get in about 18 miles. Then I'm going to reselect the approach mode. And at that point, I'll be close enough where I'll be able to get glide slope arm on the pitch side of the FMA so we're almost there just got about two miles to go localizer is just about right on the money there's 18 and a half miles so I'm going to select approach mode so there it is glide slope arm and that's what we want so I'm gonna follow up with a second autopilot so there we go on this approach normally if you were flying LNAV all the way in when you made your turn even though you were cleared for the approach on the base just wait till you roll out on on final still in LNAV and wait till you get 18 miles out then go to approach mode and you can just fly it on in that way that would be the normal way you'd want to do this all right, so that completes the third part of the demo, rearming for glide slope. This actually completes the flight demonstration. I am going to finish the, the flight. For those of you that have flown a lot of ILSs, you'll probably be bored watching the rest of this, so you can uh, shut down now if you want. For the rest of you that do want to see the, the, the finish, stick around I'll finish it out but this this really is the core part of the video 10 flight demo for the approach mode switch has concluded so now what I'm waiting on let me back up my camera view I'm waiting on glide slope to come alive here's a side view of a vertical profile the dash magenta I'm sorry the solid line magenta is our glide slope the dash magenta is our 3800 foot glide slope intercept altitude you can see we're just coming up on Hako we've got a real shallow descent going so we've just passed Hako now we're heading to Condi we're 12 and a half miles out remember Condi is a 7.5 DME and it's uh, one of our call outs for our altitude checks with no no flags and we are just coming up on leveling uh, coming up on 3800 feet pretty soon to level off and then fly in to capture uh, glide slope glide slope capture uh, call out is glide slopes alive the uh, hollow needle tells us we're getting a signal but we're still at least two and a half dots away when we get within two and a half dots it'll go in solid and that's also glide slope alive uh, point and we'll go gear down flaps 15 and arm the speed brakes So Condi looks like about 
uh, two and a half miles out. I'll double click on this center knob again. Yeah, I'm getting pretty close. All right, there's the solid. We're now two and a half dots. Glide slope is alive, so we're going to go gear down. Flaps 15. Arm the speed brakes. And there's the speed speed brakes are arm. Flap <clears throat> flaps 15. Now let's watch our uh, crossing altitude. I'm checking the PFD and ND, no flags, coming up on 7.5, crossing the final approach fix, which is Condi. Altitude checks, no flags. There's glide slope capture, flaps 40. Glide slope capture takes us out of VNAV, so I've got to manually bug the speed down to VREF plus 5, which is 142. And I got to set missed approach altitude 6,000 feet. And got to do the landing checklist. And let's go up, check the overhead. It says engine start switches, they're continuous. Speed brake is armed landing gear is down flaps are 40 green light landing checklist is complete we've been cleared to land we've got land three rollout is armed flare armed we're absolutely centered on localizer and glide slope and on speed so our three main parameters are right on the money We've got a 100 foot decision height that I'll be calling out. So at this point, uh, 600 feet radio altimeter, we're looking uh, excellent. There's the runway dead ahead. And here comes decision height, the rising runway, 100 feet, land. There's flare. And we're down, reverse. Ninety knots, seventy knots, stowing reversers, and getting on the brakes. All right, so there you have it. So that completes video 10 MCP approach mode switch, and that concludes the flight demo. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.